Today I'm going to share some tips for calculating current carrying capacity in accordance with BS 7671. So if you're already working in the electrical industry in the UK or if you're studying, I hope this video has something for you. So to calculate the current carrying capacity, we need to know the design current, IB, then select the size of the protective device, IN, and then select the as installed current carrying capacity of the cable, IZ. And the normal way of doing this is by making sure that the design current is less than or equal to the rating of the protective device, and then making sure that the protective device is related less than or equal to the IZ of the cable. And so this can be expressed as shown here on the screen. In all situations, the design current must always be less than the protected device, and in the majority of situations, the protected device be rated less than the IZ of the cable, as this ensures that the protected device protects the cable against overload. However, there are a couple of exceptions to this last part, and I will explain in this video, so please be sure to watch to the end to find out, as you may find this useful. So first we need to calculate the design current. Using the calculations on the screen, which I'm sure you'll already be familiar with, then we can select the rating of the protected device by selecting the device that is either equal to or greater than the design current. And then we can calculate the IZ, the current carrying capacity of the cable using this formula by dividing the IN by any applicable correction factors. So we select any applicable correction factors, for example, factors for grouping, ambient temperature, and so on. We multiply the relevant correction factors and then divide the value for IN by the correction factors. Again, I'm sure this is a calculation that you're already familiar with. However, as I mentioned earlier, there are a couple of exceptions to this. The first is when it comes to ring socket circuits. If you install a ring socket circuit wired in 2.5 millimeter cable and protected by a 32 amp protected device as described in Appendix 15 of BS 7671, in that situation, the protected device rated at 32 amps is greater than the rating of the 2.5 millimeter cable. The reason for this is explained in regulation 433.1.204, which says that accessories to BS1363, so in other words, socket outlets, can be supplied by a ring circuit protected by 30 or 32 amp protective devices, the circuit having a minimum CSA of 2.5 millimeter cable, except for mineral insulated cable. Such circuits are deemed to meet the requirements if the current carrying capacity IZ of the cable is not less than 20 amps. So in other words, each leg of the ring circuit is not expected to exceed 20 amps. So for this reason, when calculating the current carrying capacity for the cable, we can use 20 divided by the correction factors instead of the rating of the protected device. And you may find this useful when calculating the current carrying capacity IZ of the cable. The next example is fixed appliances, such as electric showers or electric heaters. Regulation number 433.3.1 indent 2 explains that a protected device for protection against overload need not be provided for a conductor which, due to the characteristics of the load, is not likely to carry overload current, provided that the conductor is protected against fault current in accordance with section 434. Now, when we say that overload protection need not be provided, in reality, the overload protection device such as an MCB is installed but what we can do is when we calculate the IZ of the cable, we can divide the design current by the correction factors rather than the rating of the protected device, IN. However, in this situation, the protected device must provide protection against fault current. So it's very important to carry out both adiabatic equations. And that's what um, the regulation means when it refers to section 434. Now, as I said before, most situations, we simply use the value of the protected device and make sure that the rating of the cable is greater than the protected device. However, using the design current, where permissible, may be useful to you if you are ever asked to calculate the most economic insulation, as this may result in a smaller cable being selected. So here are a couple of examples. In this first example, I've done a calculation for a 9.2 kilowatt electric shower. So the design current, IB, we've got 9200 divided by 230, which gives us 40 amps. So in this situation, the IN would be 40 amps, which is the same as the IB. So in this case, the calculation is the same. So the value for IT would be equal to 40 divided by any applicable correction factors, and that would give us our IZ. So in this next example, I've got a calculation for an 8.5 kilowatt electric shower. So in the calculation for design current, I've got 
8500 divided by 230, which gives us 36.95 amps. So in this situation, the design current is lower than the protective device. The protective device IN would be 40 amps, but the figure for IB can be used to calculate the IT. So the IT for the cable is equal to 36.95 divided by the correction factors, and that will give us our value for IZ. Now you may be thinking, what if another electrician comes along later on and replaces the shower or the electric heater for a larger one that exceeds the rating of the cable? This may be a potential downside of this method that may mean that in practice, you still prefer to size the cable to be greater than the rating of the protected device. Also, when selecting the cable size, we also need to consider the voltage drop, the adiabatic equation, and compliance with the maximum ZS. So there are other factors that affect the sizing of the cable as well. If you'd like to know more about how to do this, please see the other videos on my channel.